Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, Frugal Listener. My name's Sam, and I talk about all things sewing, particularly dressmaking. Today is day 47 of 100 days of sewing, and I've got five tips to use masking tape in the sewing room. First of all, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone who's watched these videos so far. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, hit this subscription button and the notification bell will tell you when I've got new videos out. So on to today's video. So I watched Karen on Just Get It Done Quilts, who is a quilter, and how she was using masking tape in quilting. And I thought that could be applied to dressmaking as well, just to save you a bit of time and maybe make things a little bit easier for you. So just to clarify, uh, I am in the UK and masking tape generally looks like this white stuff here but you can get this green stuff as well and this is called painter's tape. Now there is a cost difference in that the masking tape is usually £1.49 and this frog tape was closer to £5. So this is called frog tape and it's also a painter's masking tape. You can use either but I think the painter's tape is slightly better in that it's a higher tack. It's, it's just a bit more a bit more substantial shall we say for some of the jobs. Both of these are around about an inch thick and you can use whatever width you like. So if you are in the UK this frog tape is actually quite easily available. We found, found this quite easily in a, a larger DIY, DIY store. My first one is to use it as a sewing guide and this is one that Karen did show, show us how to do and quite useful for quilting because she's doing a lot of straight seams. In dressmaking you don't do so many straight seams but still if you've only just started to sew and you're really struggling with getting your st seams straight this is a really great way of getting you used to your seam guide. But sometimes it's just easier to have something to butt up against and I thought this idea was great. So take your craft knife, cut through maybe five or six layers and then line up with whatever seam allowance you're sewing at. That's five eighths of an inch there. And then if you've got a really long hem, it comes off right off your machine and you can butt up against that. So it's quite important that you get it straight on the actual line that you're aiming for, not too far to one side. So we're aiming here for five eighths of an inch. And that's pretty accurate. Five eighths of an inch, five eighths of an inch, and five eighths of an inch. So I think that's a good accurate way of doing it. Easy to pull off, doesn't leave your machine all sticky. And you can move that then, doing a different seam allowance. Probably don't have to get it as thick as I've done. I would say there's probably nearer to 10 layers there than there is five. And don't worry about the wrinkles. That makes no difference at all. It's this edge that's nice and straight. Other methods that I've seen is, is piling one on top of the other, sticking one on top of the other. If you cut it straight off the roll like this, it's just going to give you a better finish. I've seen many ways of using a variety of things as a seam guide, such as like rubber bands or like a hairband or something like that, but they do have a tendency to move. This method stops your fabric from moving about whilst you're using it. Because you're stacking your tape on top of each other, it just gives that little ledge for you to give it as a guide. It's not You're not just following it on the machine, it gives you a guide off the machine as well. And I've never seen it done like that before, so I thought that was genius. So my next one is to use the tape as labels on your fabric. How many times have you not been able to tell the right side and wrong side of a fabric? Some fabrics are far harder to tell the front and the back than others. I find blacks and navy blues really difficult to discern. Just by sticking a piece of tape on whilst you're sewing and cutting out your pattern pieces will save you loads and loads of time. Now I know we've got all sorts of marking tools. It's one of those things that in a pinch would be really useful. And also if you accidentally mark the wrong side, you're not damaging your fabric. If you can't tell the right side and the wrong side of the fabric and you accidentally mark the right side. I've got a friend who's used an official sewing marker on her fabric on the right side and it bleached out the fabric and it damaged the fabric. There's lots and lots of ways of using masking tape to mark your fabric. Particularly when you're cutting out a pattern, uh, oftentimes you'll find pieces are very, very similar to each other. So it's a good way of labeling it. Oftentimes it's difficult to tell the uh, top from the bottom so that's a good way of labelling it. So just stick a piece of masking tape on and it's immediately obvious when you're grabbing your fabric which is the right side and which is the wrong side. I can't tell you how many times I can't tell which is the right side or the wrong side and using this light coloured stuff as well 
uh, you can actually write the actual pieces on. So you could write top and bottom or centre front and centre back or whatever. You could use it as a way of labelling any of your tools in your sewing room, uh, like your machine feet. If you've got one of those big boxes where they're all very, very similar, just marking your feet, which one's which, save you lots and lots of time. You could also stick some on your machine just to remind you which needle that you're using. If you've not got around to making the handy dandy little needle organiser that I uh, showed you how to make on day 26 of 100 days of sewing where I talked about the differences in machine needles, I gave you a little demonstration on how to, how to make one of those. And the idea of that is keep this one free for whatever needles in your machine. Uh, but prior to that, I always used to label my machine or forget. <laughs> so yeah the low tack on the masking tape is it shouldn't damage your fabric. I have heard that some fa some uh, masking tapes have got acid or something in them so just read the labels and make sure but there isn't anything in this this that's going to damage your fabric and you're not leaving it there long term neither. If you keep the habit of putting it on the wrong side of your fabric you shouldn't have any bother. Let me know below if you can think of any other ways of using masking tape for labelling in your sewing room. So my next one is just an easy way for picking up pins and needles. How many times you've dropped all those pins on the floor and can't find them or can't pick them up or your fingernails aren't long enough. Or if you've broken a needle, sticking it onto there uh, and a way of picking it up. If you're like me and you keep your tape measure around your neck and you can never remember which is the right way or the wrong way, a piece of that coloured tape is perfect for you to know that number one is always on the green end. Obviously don't cover up your numbers. I've got a tape that's got little bits of metal on and I'm always picking it up that side instead of that side. But no more, my friends, no more. <laughs> The other thing was, this little uh, metal tab was a bit loose and every time I pulled it off my neck like that, it grabbed my hair, so it stopped it from doing that as well. So that was a, that was a bonus I didn't think about. So my last one is something that I always used to do with sellotape and you can do it with masking tape as well, and that is to form it into a loop back to front. So you've got the sticky side out like that. Just keep it at the side of you whilst you're sewing and any little threads that you've cut off just keep it there to stick your threads onto if you've not got a bin nearby. I never have a, a dustbin uh, nearby. I do have a bag that I keep scraps in, but I don't really want all the little bits of thread going in there. And then when you finish sewing, you just screw it up and throw it in the bin. It saves a mess on your floor after you finish sewing. So I actually thought it'd be quite useful for getting all the stray bits of thread when you've unpicked a seam. But having tried it, I do think that either sellotape or one of these lint rollers is far more effective. Uh, it's just not high tack enough. I always keep one of these in the sewing room as well, just to dust myself down before I go out. I go out covered in thread. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else does that. Leave me a comment below if you find stray bits of thread all over your clothes when you've gone out. I also have to check round my neck, make sure I haven't got my, my tape measure around my neck as well. Nah, not so great for that, is it? Best thing for that is one of these. So that's my five tips. Let me know below if you can think of any more. I do have another video where I look at 10 free sewing tools on day 34 of 100 days of sewing. So go take a look at that one. And if you can think of any more ways that you can use masking tape or sellotape or washi tape or anything like that in your sewing room, let me know and maybe I'll put a second video together. Or any little uh, unusual items that you wouldn't normally find in the sewing room, let me know below and I'll put another video together for you. If you found this video useful, uh, please consider subscribing and if you hit the notification bell, uh, that will let you know when I've got new videos out. Generally that's midweek. On a Friday I am doing Frugal Fridays where I look at free patterns and discounts and any competitions that I've found that week. And on a Sunday, I do plans, makes and reviews and the occasional fabric haul. The 100 Days of Sewing series, I try to show how sewing can be accessible to everybody, if that's in terms of cost or techniques and little videos like this. So if you click the notification bell, it will notify you when I've got a new video out. So that's it from me. I will speak to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.